wanted to start the video off straight from heading off from the beautiful apartment in Caceres, but I didn't get ready in time. I had to do a few emails, so I had to quickly run out in case, well, in case I overstayed my welcome there. So I've done something I don't often do. I've come to McDonald's because if you need somewhere that's got some Wi-Fi, for example, to book some travel, I find across Europe, whether it's Spain or France, McDonald's always have, for one, excellent open spaces, brilliant free Wi-Fi. You can get some tea, some coffee. And I ordered some brown bread with delicious looking salsa. And they gave me, they gave me my brown bread with salsa. And I said, where's the salsa? And she said, oh, it's here. Didn't, didn't look like that in the pictures, but it's two pounds 50. It's a perfect way to start the day. I've just booked a, a hotel. It was, I mean, it's 40 pounds. It's in the port of, or the port town of Tarifa. It's, I think, about five minutes ride from where I'll be getting the ferry over to Morocco. It's 500 kilometers and five hours riding. It's now, it's now five to 12. I wanted to leave at about eight, but I just had to catch up with too much work. So I'm leaving a bit later than I wanted to, but I'm hoping to smash out the first little bit. And if I can get there for seven or eight o'clock, that would be perfect. The weather, yeah, you can see a bit. There we go, kind of goes blue. It's stunning, it's 27 degrees. There are mountains just in the distance there and I'm heading that way. I cannot wait, it's just such an amazing feeling. Waking up in the morning after a long day's ride the day before, packing up again and hitting the road. Final hour and a quarter, but for the past two hours, oh, it's so hot now. Even when you're doing 80 miles an hour, it feels like there's a very, very warm hair dryer blowing you in the face. Oh, I need to take my inner lining out. Oh. I hope it's no warmer than this in Morocco. And I hope I've got some water. It's the final push. It's been mainly, mainly motorways up until probably the past 30 minutes or so. I should get in by about seven or eight o'clock. It's about 6 p.m. now, and the heat does not let up. Bonneville, performing perfectly. It's just so comfortable I can get off after riding for five hours and skip skip for hours afterwards it's that good okay final push then I'll show you what my apartment gets me that was a last minute booking as they always are that's 40 pounds right near the port very excited for that oh actually I, I have to take this out in lining now Unpleasant. Oh God. You get to a point where it doesn't matter. It's impossible to feel more uncomfortable than this. 
so it doesn't matter. Hmm. Lost my earplugs. <laughs> That's embarrassing. They were in my ear already. The heat's getting to me. Oh, guy from the helmet. Oh no. Oh dear. of people said I had to go to Morocco from the port of Tarifa because you climb an ascent to get into Tarifa and from that ascent you get an incredible view of Africa and you can see the continent so clearly and get an appreciation of just how close Africa is to Europe and I was riding along I could not believe it I did a double take actually because I had no idea it was so close caught it on a brilliant day that's Africa. Can't believe how close it is. It's also quite a busy shipping lane. I'll flip the camera to give the best possible view. There it is. Down the rolling green hills, beautiful blue sky and the sea is so calm. Quite a few shipping containers out there on the ships and you can see the port of Morocco on the other side there. Stunning. parked up there all unpacked and I've just had a walk around Tarifa it's again a lovely town if I've got a chance before getting on the ferry I'll make sure I'll show you a bit of it I didn't realize this is actually a hostel I'll flip the camera and show you the room ground floor very simple so you've got a little fridge in the corner Small bit of storage space there with a chair, gigantic bed. Really one of the biggest beds I've seen, which is quite unusual for such a small place with a bathroom. If it's got a bathroom, I don't care if it's a hostel, I'm happy. And that is what you get around about 40, 41 pounds for the night. And importantly, it's got Wi-Fi. <laughs>
Good morning. The day's finally arrived. Four days after I left, I should be, if all goes well, entering Morocco in about four and a half hours' time. My ferry leaves in two and a half hours' time, and I've also booked accommodation in Rabat, which is a town in Morocco three hours south along the coast. So, if all goes well, by about five or six o'clock, I should be in a nice, comfortable apartment. I've heard there's a bit of paperwork, though, at the port of Morocco. It's not as simple as just traveling around Europe. So, I, I hope I've got everything I need. And by that, I mean I don't have anything. So, I hope there's nothing specific that I'm required to have. Should be interesting, though. I'm really excited. This has been, really, what it's all about, getting into Africa never been to Africa before. For me, it's a completely unknown quantity. Oh, ridiculously excited. It feels amazing. I've made it. The African continent. Thought I'd pull over here. I was just riding along the road. I've been going for about maybe 45 minutes or so to get out of the town of Tangier and I saw just a little glimpse of the sea so I thought it's a perfect time to pull over for an update. The ferry was £87. Extremely well organised. Very modern. They've got Wi-Fi, cafe and everything like that. But the 
The type of people on there surprised me. A lot of Australians and a lot of Americans. I did not expect to see that. There was a massive queue that took up about 30% of the middle floor of the ferry. And initially I thought that people were queuing up for the, the exclusive lounge, the VIP lounge. But then I thought, that's strange for a one hour crossing. Turns out they were queuing up for customs. I only found out about halfway through when an Australian couple were getting very angry at a member of staff for not telling them that they had to get their passports stamped. So I've never seen this before. Customs getting checked by the Moroccan police happens on the boat itself. They then stamp your passport. You don't need any prior forms or anything like that. Just take your passport with you, but you must get it done on the boat. You then come off the boat and there are, again, police and they've got the sniffer dogs. They're checking all of your luggage. They're letting the sniffer dogs sniff around. They ask for your logbook, which is an important point, I almost forgot. Logbook confirming you own the vehicle. That's essential. It's just by pure luck I ended up bringing that. If you don't have that, I don't know what happens. So definitely bring that. They then give you a little piece of paper, I think, confirming that you're allowed to ride in the country. But this is it. Huge, huge step for me to actually get to, uh, to Africa. Five hours that way. Can't wait. That was an eventful day. I've actually been riding for about seven and a half hours or so. It's now, it's 6.30, seven and a half hours, something like that. The thing is I've just stopped so many times because it's all so fascinating and so new and so different to me. I keep stopping, take a picture of some goat shepherds and then take a picture of someone using a horse to pull a cart. And oh, it's, it's just an overload of the senses. I stupidly wasn't organized enough and didn't take cash out. So I went to some, well, accidentally, I went on a toll road, even though I told my sat-nav not to take me on a toll road. 
So I accidentally went on a toll road, took the ticket initially, went to pay, gave them my debit card, and they said, nope, Moroccan money only. So after 15 minutes of me holding up all of the traffic, they, they were trying to figure out what to do with me. And I was just there standing like a vegetable. Obviously, I can't speak any relevant language for them at all. So in the end, they said, right, give us your driving license. We'll use that as a guarantee. Now go and find a cash point. And I said, OK, that's perfectly fair. Where's a cash point? And they said, there should be one in the town next door. And I thought, oh dear, for one, I'm going to struggle actually finding this toll booth again. And secondly, I've only got downloaded Google Maps. It's going to be really hard for me to actually find uh, a cash point. So after asking different policemen and different people on the street, 20 minutes later, I managed to find a cash point, rode back, but the whole thing took an hour of my time. So that's a good lesson. Always, always take cash. Even when I went to the restaurant, they gave me a huge spread of loads of different food. And I said, can I pay on card? And they laughed in my face. They're extremely polite, lovely bunch. But yes, they laughed in my face. It's, it's cash, especially when you're out of the cities. Cash is definitely king. But they are a lovely bunch. Very, very friendly, hospitable, curious people. I like them a lot. Scenery's been amazing up until probably the last 20 minutes or so where I've had to use the dual carriageways, but it's lovely. I have found out though, one thing that's a, a little bit of a problem. In the restaurant, going outside afterwards, I asked, où est la toilette? Where's the toilet? And they pointed outside to me. So I went outside to the toilet and they're long drop toilets. And I think this will be this will be the pattern of what it will be like here. I guess long drop toilets are normal. I just, I don't know how to use them. It's a hole in the ground and there's no loo paper. There's just a tap on the side of the bathroom with a small plastic bucket. Uh, it's just all so alien to me. So I've got a lot of things to get used to, but it's been a fascinating first day. I've got half an hour left to get into Rabat. I don't know if I said earlier, we're on the outskirts of Rabat, or I'm on the outskirts of Rabat now. So last half an hour, I guess it's not too late. It's just been too fun today. I haven't stopped taking photos. Oh, I should say one extra thing, quite a big thing. I, uh, I was running low on fuel, so I went to a petrol station. <laughs> and the man, there, there's always a man sitting next to the petrol station on a little stool, and he goes like this to me. So I ride up to him and say, uh, What's, what's the problem? He said, no fuel. I thought, okay, that's strange. And then I wasn't desperate at this point, but 15 minutes later, when the desperation had just begun, I went to another petrol station, rode in, and again, another guy sitting at a chair at the petrol station. And he does that to me. And then I start panicking. About 10 minutes later, I managed to find one, but that's another lesson. Don't let fuel get anywhere near empty and always, always, always carry cash.
That was a bit of a struggle parking the bike. Rabat's a little bit bigger than I thought and parking is about a 10 minute walk that way. So I've ended up parking the bike on the street, uh, obviously completely out of sight, but there's nothing I can do. There are so many police around, I really think it'll be fine. I'll wrap up the video with an apartment tour because this is one of the most beautiful apartments I think I've ever stayed at. It's exactly what you want at the end of a long day's ride. It is beautiful and so classically Moroccan. Delighted I've picked this. So this is the apartment, Da Karima. I'll leave all the details in the written description because this is well worth it. Come in to this dark corridor with wooden roof. And that's the tiny little door you come through. Old wooden door there. And then you make your way through into Beautiful courtyard area. And this, this is my room. What a place. Away from home now. I definitely started feeling it probably for the last three or four hours or so. The further south and south you get into Africa, into Morocco, it's a fun feeling. It feels like a real adventure. I think I'll spend the evening going to get some dinner in Rabat town, try and find somewhere to park the Bonneville so hopefully I won't get a ticket and then plan for the route tomorrow to figure out where to go. I checked for tomorrow morning. I can stay here till 12 o'clock. I've got breakfast at 10 o'clock and there's no way I'm leaving even a minute early. This place is way, way too special. I need to soak it in and make the most of it. Right, good evening all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.